Oh, hey guys, it's uh, Crusty Old Crow. Back on a Tuesday night instead of a Friday night to do another one of his Tactical Perspective toy reviews. Uh, so we're living in a weird time for me right now and it's all Hasbro's fault. Uh, so I am the Crusty Old Crow, Ryan, the, the guy that retired from the Canadian Armed Forces after 25 years and decided he wanted to just start putting his voice out there about the new G.I. Joe series and that's all I do. I don't talk about Star Wars. Don't talk about Warhammer and other interesting things to me or comics or movies. Just talk about this. Anyways, guys, talking about this, Hasbro has made it pretty easy for me to keep on top of at least doing a weekly episode. So uh, this week, I'm getting ahead of the game and we're going to go with uh, number 92 in the series, which is the Desert Commando Snake Eyes. All right. So guys, right off the bat... Uh, you know, we're talking about a repaint today. Uh, and how do I feel about repaints? Guys, I'm as torn as you are. And it's showing in the market the how torn we are about repaints, okay? Um, when I first got into this line, I was aware that there was already repaint on the go in Tiger Force. And that was fine. I was kind of like, yeah, I remember Tiger Force. Man, Tiger Force when I was a kid, yeah. I didn't get any, but I remember seeing the commercials for them, and I remember they were a thing. Then I went through my adult life, which, you know, interesting in its own way, but this is about Joe. I come back, I expect Tiger Force on the market, but then there's, like, uh, the Night Force. So I was like, hmm, they look cool. Don't really, I think I was out of collecting them before those guys came around. And then, you know, the, the Cobra stuff had the Crimson Guard. And you've heard me talk about that in other videos. And thank you, all of you who watched that last video and if you liked it as much as you had. I was surprised for Crimson Guard video did well. Uh, and then, like I said, the Arctic Troops and all these different repaints start coming out of bats and other things. You get repaints for Tiger Force, and I understand it, and it's a little hit or miss. We see that with Bazooka. We see it with Flint. And sometimes we see it really hit well with uh, Outback, for example. But uh, you expected all that. I didn't expect a desert combat repaint. I really didn't, and I should have. Tactically, I think it's great. So here we are with desert combat snake eyes repaint. And I'm like, Oh, uh, it's a repaint, but shit, I like it. Okay, so what is it that's so likable about this? Well, for me, it's all about the color schemes on this, but let's just go over the box. You know, you got your digital render with him and his arid combat. He's clearly in a, in one of those Middle Eastern countries uh, in the desert somewhere. Uh, and then in the background, you can see that there's a, a Black Hawk ready to either pick him up or having just dropped him off, you decide. But more importantly, there's another Storm Shadow right there. And this one is Storm Shadow with the, with the hood, but and he's in white, but he's got a lot more black going on. And I'm wondering if that means we're gonna get, uh, and by black, I mean, if you look at his arms, I believe it is, he's got some black or maybe that's just dark in there. It looks like they're almost saying there's another Storm Shadow on the horizon for the Desert Combat line, something more thematic with the Middle Eastern feel of it, which I would look forward to seeing. Uh, and again, another repaint or another retooling of a character. You get your digital render of the character's weapons and accessories, and there's some interesting stuff in that accessories, but not as much as you would hope. Uh, he's number two, uh, 92 on the C, uh, the series, and you've got that good box side art. No problems there. That'll look nice in the end of any post of the collection as you, as you get them there. That's a pretty cool little snake eyes thing. I really like the rendering of the mask, and I'll get into that when I do my head-to-toe inspection just before the playability and tactical grade. On the back, no change. Uh, you get your digital render with all the kit. And, uh, yeah, this time you've got to loop the grenade belt on him. I remember with my other snake eyes, whatever number that was in the series where he came with timber. Was that 52 or something like that? Anyways, it was already on there. This time it's a separate piece, but he's got a new backpack and a choice of swords now. And you can see everything is desert themed, but it is still just the repaints really. Okay, uh, a digital code on there. The QR code, if you're going to Hasbro.com, you find out what that is. That's enough of that box. Inside the box, uh, which does actually have that now boasting plastic-free uh, plastic packaging, 
Inside that, you get your ammo crate, Desert Combat Snake Eyes, number 92, your Pelican case, as it were. And then this is another one where you have that interior box art. For those of you that like to use these as background displays, I have enough now. I'm thinking I might do the same now. Um, a little undecided. You know, you guys know how I am about background displays. I like shifting everything around with my ADHD. So guys, uh, I'm gonna shift us over to my Cobra Island display and uh, we're gonna talk about this new Snake Eyes repaint, how I feel about it. We'll do that head to toe inspection, have our discussion about the, the, the tactical viability of this kit uh, and what I think about whether this is a worthwhile repaint. Well, I kinda try to not rant too much about repaints. All right, so let's go over there and pardon me, you know, you get that usually thematic camera wobble that I bring to the table. And uh, while I'm doing this, I'm trying not to look at the score of my Leafs game, but right now we're kind of kind of spanking your, your Washington Capitals right now, guys. Three nothing right now, so sorry about that. And I do know that my viewers are mostly Americans, so I, I'm glad to have you on, and uh, I try not to boast too much about my Leafs because I'm a Leafs fan and I know better. All right, so you got your snake eyes here posed, and you can see in the background that I tucked away the, my other variant of the snake eyes for my collection, and I put Dusty back there, and there was a reason, because Dusty's the only figure I have that kind of matches that desert theme uh, that they, they, they're going for with this figure. So I had him in the background because, to me, this is Dusty's fire team partner for now, for lack of better terms, guys. Uh, everything in the military, you do better with fire team partners for the most part. So uh, I always felt like Dusty was kind of missing someone on my shelf. I had him sitting with Sergeant Slaughter. Now he can sit beside Snake Eyes 2 Point, whatever. Uh, anyways, it came down to it today, guys. I was having a bad day and I wanted to get uh, a new figure. I got back from the doctor's office. Yeah, I, guys, I'm 50. I'm dealing with my first, uh, you know, ailment that has to do with my age, a hernia, and it, it blows. I'm not gonna lie, it blows. So I decided I was gonna buy myself a figure a little early this week to cheer myself up, and it did. Guys, no matter, it's the truth about us, you know, uh, especially us ADHD and man children. Uh, no matter how bad we're feeling, if we buy a toy, we feel just a little bit better, right? So here we are with our Desert Combat Snake Eyes here to cheer me up. And it came down between him and Tiger Force Flint on the shelf. And God love me, I'm just not ready to do that Tiger Force Flint. I should do it if I want to stay current with reviews, but we all have the same thoughts for the most part on it. And I've looked at it. And from a tactical perspective, there's things to be said. But my God, I don't know if it's worth me paying the full price to say them. Snake Eyes, on the other hand, I had some ideas about potential, and I was better with it. So there we go. So I, as I've been blathering on, I've been showing you the figure. You can see it is a complete recast. So my review head to toe isn't going to real focus on much that would have changed from my review of the Snake Eyes I did earlier in my videos. That's not me trying to tell you to go back and watch the old video. It's just that we've all seen this snake eyes for a long time we're just seeing them in a different color set with a different head and a couple of different pieces of kit and that's cool so let's focus on that uh with the helmet that's the first thing i really did like about this i i'm one of those guys that's undecided about this whole polarization lens on every figure that's going to come out now uh but i realized this guy's got a lot of troop potential troop building potential especially if i Forget the fact that this is supposed to be Snake Eyes. We see the 60th anniversary Desert Trooper coming out with that Bell Clava and all the other kit. And we start to see with this guy and Dusty all kind of come together. So I decided I wanted at least one on there. Uh, but I really did like that helmet sculpt that they did. And it's not so much a helmet as a, as a partially hard pack and partial cloth uh, Bell Clava pullover set. You know, that uh, wears, uh, wears uh, the goggles on the inside of it. So I noticed this. I was looking at it going, they really did do a magnificent job with this. You can see the seam lines and stretching where it is clearly cloth pulled over the head. Uh, but then you've got those air cuts there. That So it's starting to look like it's a polypro mask. 
around his face, which is really cool. Polypropylene masks are, uh, you know, they're they're very common in military, especially in arid the arid areas. Uh, they're light and they they filter out the sand and dust just fine. There was different variants of that stuff, right? But then I noticed the visor and the you know I like the yellow reflective lens. I had those on some of my ballistics. Uh, I didn't think much of yellow lens unless it was just like that kind of a day I wanted to wear them and it kind of illuminated things when we were driving around a little bit. Help me see. Maybe it was my color blindness. But I was like, where's the backs of them? And then I looked at the back and at first I thought that's a cool tension strap, but it was weird. They did a different color. And then I realized that these goggles are fed in through the Belclava. And I thought that was just a fantastic design detail for that helmet. It totally sold me on being stuck with the, another snake eyes head but this one doesn't look like another snake eyes head and by stuck it's because i had a second plan for this and it incorporated using grunt's helmet his steel core helmet i wanted to put uh the grunt's steel core helmet onto my snake eyes there was a little bit of difference with the green and the brown that kind of had me hesitant and then i realized this head was impossible for me to remove. I tugged at it and tugged at it. And if I tugged at it anymore, uh, I, I was worried I was going to damage it. And this figure already had no control, quality control issues. And the head was really articulate. And I, I seized that plan. I checked fire, guys. I was like, no, I'm keeping it like this. Again, I keep seeing this army builder potential in it. Um... You know, you ditch that sword, maybe you ditch that grenade belt. Maybe you swap out some weapons. This could be a small little uh, joint task force kind of group. And it really got me thinking that I think we're going to see more in the desert in the desert camo line uh, from Hasbro. As they're saturating the market already. Look, guys, I went in thinking uh, it's going to be an expensive year. You've got uh, Buzzer and Ripper that are due any moment. Hawk to uh, um, Helix and Shockwave. I've got my pre-orders in on all of them. I'm expecting them to come in at two, three, four at a time. Those are going to be heavy financial hits. And then there's more coming after that. You know, like we're to expect Airborne and, and all the new Dreadnoughts on top of that. And I'm just like, that's a big year. It's a huge year. And somehow on top of that, they're building a Tiger Force. They're building Crimson Guard. They're building Night Force. And we now get a single figure for this desert force. And I'm like, no, it's not going to stop there. No, no, there's got to be more of these coming. So one of the other differences on this one uh, that we'll talk about is that shoulder patch. He's got a really cool little shoulder patch. Uh, and I like it when they do this. This worked so well when they did it for Tunnel Rat and uh, other characters. You know, that little icon or just a little symbol of special training that's denoted with the Joe. That's unique unto them. That's always a welcome sight. And having that, it looks like a panther or a mountain lion or, or some sort of cat on there. Uh, yeah, it, it, my glasses aren't on. I'm not lying, guys. That's a, that's a really cool ad, and I did respect it a lot. The weapons I'll talk about in the end uh, when I get to the accessories a little bit. I neither like nor dislike. Uh, I, actually, I do like, uh, but there, there's a point about it that we'll talk about. The other new feature is that backpack, at least how the sword is laid out. So we've got this backpack right there. Uh, and it's modest and it's a short pack. So, I mean, it works with the, the desert idea. Uh, the last thing you want to do is load yourself down uh, in the hottest of climates. You you pack for what you need and then you leave the rest on a vehicle or a biv site. Or, you know, it's... it's it, a guy like Snake Eyes, I always thought, would pack light. And this is a representation that he does. Very humble, nice little backpack. All right, there you go. And that's something that, it's the design that we all see in the most of the forces anyways. Very, very modern design for that pack. What I wanted to draw attention to is this scabbard and sword. Like, yes, it's the old Snake Eyes scabbard and sword. You know, you get it, but the, the, the sword I got for mine was extremely warped, right? So, and I set it down and I think it fell down into the, the canyons of everything and that's fine because I'm more about this sword. We can look at the other sword another time, but this is the sword I prefer for my snake eyes now. 
the reason being is I find it, it's a nice change. It's a bit more modern. And when you have a Snake Eyes repaint, the more kit that you can change for it and uh, still be respectful to the original, the better. Uh, the reason I'm not a big fan of the other sword, and yeah, I did set that down right here, uh, is because mine came like this, super warped. Uh, and then it's got this weird coloration to it that I think I'll like once I have a better look at it. I hadn't really paid it much mind. Um, but I needed an, uh, my old sword for Snake Eyes was already half broken at the hilt, so I wanted to have a second one. I did, I do. But I've got to straighten this in hot water and cool it. And then even then it's not a good replacement for the other one. It's its own kind of thing here. Uh, yeah, I could have just dealt with the one sword and not needed the repaint re of the other. The guns, we'll talk about those really quick right now. So the desert pa pattern with two-tone brown. I mean, you're doing it kind of right. I like it. It worked for the guns and it brings back an interest to a repainted gun in a different way than just going a solid one color black, one color gray, uh, one color tan. They did mix that up with the, the second color, of uh, a darker brown, much like his fatigues are and his belts and everything are. Uh, so that worked out well. But when it comes to the desert guns, I've got a bit of a bias because I think Mattel's kind of taken an easy way out with doing a, a brown mold plastic dye or whatever and then quickly doing a quick brown paint on some components that they can see the shapes of, right? Like that's the thing. You can see the shapes of the foregrip on the Uzi. You can see the shape of the backstock on the Uzi and on the pistol, you can see the pistol grip. Uh, and therefore it's easy to paint those, just that, that second brown collar done color a day. However, if you pay close attention to how we actually uh, paint our, paint our guns when they are camo brown and what have you brown or winter white or whatever it's more of a spray job guys it's not uh it's not uh, there, there's components yes we have mix and match color components and that's for sure represented but when we truly cam something off it's a dusty looking spray job it's an airbrush and it's actually just a quick dry brush for uh for a uh, something on on a conversion scale for me to do so it's not worth complaining about but I'm just like they are so close to getting these desert weapons right they just need to do make them look a little sloppier not so clean they're so clean they're so crisp they're so definitive make them a little bit more uh you know airbrushed and made for maybe Canadian tire cans or Lowe's cans or whatever of spray paint. Guys did them in the shacks on the way out the door on a mission. You know, things like that. Uh, so that's all I have to say about that. Still loving that little knife that he comes with. He came with the other one. It was black last time. I like that in a brown. That works well. Guys, I'm a big fan of this color option. I really am. Call it a bias from having overseas experience in, uh, in Afghanistan. So maybe I just like the tans because they're familiar whatever uh i think this looks really sharp when i consider it for an army builder absolutely i would i would consider that a good army builder if there was a way to do the head swaps and uh i, th I think i think i'm just gonna have to be leaving this one alone i might buy a second one or i might tug away at that head uh carefully after i warm it up or something just to see how that works. But there was a couple other things I wanted to do. I wish it came with another one of these schmogs. Because guys, in all of the Climat Snakes I works with, this is the one where we wore these the most, was in the desert. Because they help filter the sand and dust out of your freaking face. So I was really surprised this one couldn't come with that. But then I remember, you know, we're going out for a non-deluxe set snake eye. So I, I was glad they streamlined it. But I was like, of all the snake eyes, I should have got it. This was the one. Uh, again, I really want to try that steel core helmet on there, the one that comes with grunt, uh, just to see how that worked out. Uh, but I'm not forlorn about it. But you notice similar visors, right? So it wouldn't look that bad. And then that lends that generic quality to the figure. But the one that I thought was kind of kind of cool was like, ah, oh, crap, I can't take his head off. I can't do anything. What if he had a hood? And I was thinking about, like, like a schmog hood, like like a part ma a part scarf, part hood, you know, 
But even just Zartan's hood almost makes him look like Spider-Man character almost, right? Like, but it's kind of cool. I kind of like that. There's something different about it. And now he's almost a different character. And when you zoom out a little bit, I mean, like, it's not the worst thing. It's not the best thing. Uh, but it was just something I just kind of discovered and was like, crap, that's that's the same vibe I got when I realized how how jazz cool the, the other heads look on different things. So that was a good vibe to get without that. And I, I felt better about getting that figure. You know, Tiger Force Flint ain't going to bring that to the table. Uh, so who do I think would be next in that line if they did go with Desert? I think you got to do a stalker. I think you have to for the Desert line. Just because uh, he's got that potential and his uniform would be simpler to do. So you got to go with Stalker for sure. And I think you got to go with Lady J. Because if there's a character that needs a repaint just to say we got one for her, I think it's Lady J. They've done enough with Scarlet. I don't know how they're going to do another cover girl without, without fail. But, you know, Lady J would be a good thing to do a repaint on and do the Desert Camo line. So on a playability grade on this one, I'm just going to go with a soft B. The reason it's a soft B, guys, is um, you you don't get that much variance from the original stuff. Like, and we've had so many repaints of Snake Eyes uh, in this line already. It seems almost kind of opportunistic. And this is the problem when a character gets too popular AKA Deadpool, Wolverine, Snake Eyes, uh, Darth Vader, Boba Fett, everything. Uh, when the character gets too popular, then there's a temptation to saturate the market with more and more of it. And this is what it felt like when I initially saw that. I thought, this is them trying to saturate that market. And then we're gonna all be sick of Snake Eyes. But I, I was really actually surprisingly content, but the playability wise, they didn't give you that much extra different kit. A different sword, Different paint jobs, uh, different mask. That's all, different back. So playability wise B, tactical, I'm actually going to give this a fair B, uh, like another soft B, uh, going on B plus. I've got nothing new to say about the tactical that I didn't say about Snake Eyes' equipment before. And I've already talked enough about the guns. So it's a B, a B plus for this one. But on a troop build, guys, I'm seeing this one's an A+, plus because there's just enough to take away and replace that you actually have a Special Forces-looking trooper here. If you look at it that way. And I'm going to. I, I really, the more I look at it, this seems more almost valor versus infantry lending itself into Joe, right? So, and uh, valor versus is another thing I'm just going to have to keep getting finding a way to get something out here uh my way but guys that has been it for the uh the tactical perspective on this gi joe uh desert commando snake eyes number 92 in the series uh we all know snake eyes 12 12 forms of martial arts and he's had the training in every environment in the world so it made sense and overall the longer I look at them, the happier I am with them. Uh, but my grade stands. And that is it for today. If you like this video, you know what to do. You hit that like. If you uh, liked it enough that you maybe want to see another video of mine at some point, guys, please feel free to hit that subscribe. And uh, feel free to leave any comments or photos of your Joes or anything you want to discuss that's Joe-related uh, down below. And I, I will try and read them. Well, I'll definitely read them. But I'll try to get back to you if I have some more to say on it. And thank you very much, everybody, for sticking around. 80 subscribers is, uh, it, to me, that's a lot because I'm a 50-year-old man. Uh, I realize that's nothing, but I really want to thank you all and say that really does mean a lot. So I'll see you next time, guys. Pro Till then, Crusty Old Crow, out.